today's video is all about shaded figures. You might also hear them called composite figures. So when you have several shapes put together and you have to find the area of what's shaded or what's not, and they're looking for different pieces of information. Can you dissect a complex figure? So what you're going to need today is your spiral notebook, calculator, and you're going to want to have some kind of crayon or color pencil or something that you can shade those figures in. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Go grab those materials and then come on back. Okay, so the vocabulary you're going to need to know, um, radius and diameter, remember the radius is halfway across the circle and diameter is all the way across the circle. And there is one more semicircle, and you can either write your own definition or draw the picture. Semicircle is of course the same as a half circle. Okay, you take a circle, and I know that's a wonderful circle, isn't it? Take a circle and cut it in half. A semicircle is half of a circle. Make sure you know all of your two-dimensional formulas, everything for area, area of squares and rectangles, circles, triangles, and the like. All right, we're going to get started here. So, <coughs> you're going to be asked to find the area of what's shaded, of part of this composite figure. This is when you're going to have a picture where part of the shape is shaded, or one piece is shaded, and the other one is not. Okay, take a moment to go ahead and copy this down, use that colored pencil or highlighter that you took out, and shade in the appropriate pieces, and record the right information there, and then we're going to go through the different steps. Pause the video if you need to. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to find the area of the outside shape. The outside shape. Now, as you can see here, the outside shape is a square. So the area of a square, you're going to multiply the side times another side. So I've done that for you, 8 times 8 is of course 64 inches squared. Okay. Find the area of the inside shape. In this case, the inside shape is also a square. So we would do, again, side times side, or 4 times 4, giving you 16 inches squared. Now because you only want the part that's shaded, kind of imagine this like a donut. This square is being cut out of the larger square. It's cutting out, taking it out. So you're going to subtract. Take the area of the large, subtract the area of the small, and that's going to be the area of the what's left, or the shaded part. This is a very common question for you to see, so take a moment, pause the video, write down the word problem, and see if you can solve it on your own. And then come on back and I'm going to go over it in detail. Alright, so now that you have the shape drawn, and you've worked it out, Did you have this shape or something similar to it? You should have had a rectangle to represent your yard and then a circle inside of that to represent the swimming pool. All right. Now, did you notice in the, in the word problem, the swimming pool is a 10-foot um, swimming pool. And usually when they describe a 10-foot pool or any kind of pool, they're describing the diameter. They may or may not put that in the word problem for you to know, but know that from here on forward. If you have a 15-foot pool, it's the diameter that's 15 feet. All right, here we have a 10-foot pool, okay, placed inside of our yard. We want to know how much of yard will be left for maybe playing baseball or growing a garden or just playing outside with your dog maybe. How much is left? Okay, so that's the shaded part. Once you have the picture drawn, you should have found the area of the outside shape. Remember, it's a rectangle, so you're doing base times height or length times width or side times side. All of words are changing, but the meaning is the same. You're multiplying two edges. And then you find the area of the inside shape. Now remember, it's a circle, so you're doing pi times the radius times the radius again. Okay? And then because you're finding out how much is left, we're cutting out this part of the grass by putting in the pool. So how much grass or yard is left, you're going to subtract. All right, hopefully you were successful. If not, pause the video, go back, figure out your mistakes, and then move forward and try example three on your own. Here I've already drawn the picture for you. Go ahead and copy it and use your crayons or colored pencils to mark the shaded part. And then solve and see if you can find how much of this figure is shaded. Alright, I've already previously calculated this out, so I'm going to go over fairly quickly here. 
We've got the outside shape, which of course is a rectangle. So you should be doing area of a rectangle is length times width. So you should have been doing 13 times 9. Right? So you should have gotten 117 meters squared. 117 meters squared. All right? The inside shape is a half of a circle. So if you find the area of the whole circle, which is pi times r times r, and usually you use 3.14 for pi, the radius in this case is 3 and a half. The whole thing is 7, so 3 and a half would be our radius, times 3 and a half again. You should have gotten 38. Point five. Now remember, that's the area of an entire circle, but we don't have an entire circle. We only have a half a circle. So you do have to divide that number by two. Half of a circle. So you should have gotten for the circle part, 19.25 meters squared. So now that we know the rectangle and the half circle, the last step is to subtract them. So you should have subtracted 117 minus the 19.25. How much of that figure is shaded? 97.75 meters squared. That's your final answer. If you weren't successful, rewind the video and go back and try it again. Make sure that you can do it independently. Another type of example that you might be given is where everything is shaded. This is still a composite figure because we still have multiple shapes being put together here but everything is shaded. There's a very, very slight difference to this question, and maybe you could guess. The steps are first figure out what are the different parts that are being used. What different shapes are included in that composite figure? Here we have a triangle and a half a circle. All right. Next you want to find the area of each part. We've got the area of the triangle. Remember it's one half times the base and the height. A lot of students forget the one half. And then you're also going to find the area of the semicircle. Notice that I have divided the area of the circle in half to get the semicircle. So we've got 9 times the base. Did you pay attention to that base part? If this part is 3 inches, that means this part is 3 and this part is 3. All the radiuses are 3. So to find the base of this triangle, you have to add 3 plus 3 plus 4. And that's how I got the 10. All right, and then for the circle part, we've got 3 times 3 times pi, and then don't forget, that's the area of the entire circle, so you divide it by 2. Now, the only difference between this example and the last couple of examples is here everything is shaded. If everything is shaded, you're going to add those final areas together. All right, give this example 5 a try, pause the video, draw the shape, color in the pieces that need to be colored, and see if you can figure out how much of this shape is shaded. Find the area of the composite figure, and then come on back. This is another popular question where you have a rectangle with a semicircle on the end, and sometimes this line isn't even here. So you really have to recognize that you have a rectangle and a semicircle. Alright, so you're going to find the area of each part. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So we've got the length and the width. 12 times 16. Oh, let's see. Um, 12 times 16. 192 inches squared, of course. And then the area of the semicircle, 3.14 times, what did you get as the radius? Did you get 6? 6 times 6. So the area of the circle, a full circle, would be 113.04. But don't forget, this is a semicircle, so we need to divide it by 2. Divide it in half so you can get half of that circle, and you should get 56.52. All right, the last step is you're going to add those pieces. 
So you've got the rectangle plus the half circle Two forty eight point fifty two. Make sure you have your labels inches squared. Inches squared. We're going to do some more practice problems in class. Composite figures can be challenging when you have multiple steps. As long as you do one step at a time, I'm sure you'll do great. We'll do some more practice problems in class. See you soon.